Hi everyone, my name is Caitlin Kester. I'm an artist in Northern Wisconsin. Um, I wanna give you a little bit of a background on myself before we begin our painting today. I started out completely as a potter. I was 12 years old, I threw my first pot and I considered myself a potter for, exclusively a potter for 18 years. Um, a couple years ago, I started getting more interested in painting and stuff um, with water medias, acrylics, and uh, I really, really got into that when I was diagnosed with breast cancer in December of 2018. I wasn't able to get out to the pottery studio and painting became my emotional release during that time. I just had so many emotions. Um, I was overwhelmed with emotion from the cancer diagnosis that I would wake up at 2 a.m. in the morning and my parents would find me sitting wrapped up in a blanket at my work table painting because I just couldn't sleep. And I found a love for expressing myself this way. I carried my watercolors with me in a little travel kit to all of my appointments. I could paint in the waiting rooms during my chemo treatments and it just became a way for me to focus on something other than what I was going through. And I want to share that process, that experience with you. And so that is why I have decided to create this class. Um, and, um, hey, <laughs> I get a thing going and then I get distracted. Okay. So, uh, okay. um, I don't consider myself a therapist. I'm definitely not certified as a therapist. I'm just sharing this with you as an artist and what helped me get through uh, the most difficult time in my life. What we're gonna do first is a little practice with watercolor mediums, the watercolor pencils. Um, so you wanna have a slightly larger piece of paper for uh, just a couple of warm-up exercises to make sure you kind of get a feel of how the watercolors work. And um, we're gonna start, I, I'm just gonna divide my paper into four pieces because there's about, there's four kind of general um, techniques that I'm gonna talk about here. Um, you can start, what I, how I usually start my paintings is I completely wet down my paper. So I work wet on wet. So I'm going to just start here with one section of my paper and I use one of my watercolor pencils to divide this up so it'll actually blend in with what I'm doing. Um, so you can completely wet your paper and then if you want to um, add water you can use a little eyedropper to add water to your palette itself and make like washes out of them or you can just go right on to the, um, the paints and with a wet brush. And I actually use these water-filled brushes. They're great for travel because you don't actually have to carry a container of water with you. But you have your wet paper now and you can just get whatever colors you want and you're just, you can just add the, uh, the paint directly to the water and this is the most fluid form of painting. The colors will blend and move about and it just, it creates kind of a nice overall um, color pattern texture. You want to, you don't want to mess with them too much because you'll blend the colors together a lot and you might end up with something muddy. So I usually just end up dropping colors on and letting them play. You can add water back over the top of it with um, a spritz bottle or adding more water with a brush. Um, use different brushes to get different techniques. I actually really like um, splatter painting when I'm doing this. So I'll take my, my colors, get a nice bit of water on there and then just tap and it gives an overall kind of splatter appearance. Um, so that's that's my, my personal favorite way of working. You can go back then once that's dry or on um, a different area 
of your paper, then um, you start with dry paper with your wet paint and you get more defined shapes. You can spirals and dots and um, I mean, you can do things that are more subject matter. So something that, you know, like leaves or plants, you can play with your colors that way. Um, you just, you want to just get a feel for your patterns and different things that you can do with your paint. You can do so much with them in different ways. And like this, you end up with more um, definition between your colors. And once you have the, the color on like this, you can definitely go back and add some of other colors into what you've done and do sort of the wet on wet technique within your images and textures. So like I just added some blue here into the edge of this green and that'll blend in and create some shading there. Um, and even as we're going on, you can see the, the wet on wet technique has continued to spread and change and just create fun patterns in there. Um, and then with watercolor pencils or other similar dry water mediums, um, one of the things that you can do is you can actually use them like regular colored pencils and you can start dry on dry and do some shading, layering and, you know, just if you like colored pencils, these are fantastic because you can use them, do all of your shading just like you normally do and then go back with water and turn them into sort of a watercolor paint and you just they blend together then but you have a little bit more control that way and you can put in more details you can limit your colors to the space that you're um, working on or focusing on and just you know have you know you can just have fun with them that way and once that dries too, or any of your other things, you can take your pencils and draw over the top of it to add more details. But you can just play with those too and see what your specific medium does that, um, you know, your, if you're using watercolor pencils or if you're using like a, a watercolor based crayon kind of a thing, or, um, you know, there's, there's so many different things now, but, just you can layer them and they're just like water or um, colored pencils it's so fun that way but you can create more definite shapes of color and some of them like these these last two I just used are slightly different um, are different brands so they blend differently they aren't fantastic for the dry on wet but if we do a wet section again, oh, bigger brush. So you can actually start then with wet paper or your wet paint and they'll start to, they actually, these melt really well in here. So you get the, the sharp line of the pencil, but it starts to melt in the water and flows like the wet on wet um, watercolor paint and it just, you know, every, every way that you try these is gonna have a different effect. And of course, you get the, the different, um, different mediums and add the colors in with each other. And, you know, I just want you to play right now and see how the colors the paints, the pencils with each other and interact and um, just what exactly it is you can do with them. Um, at this point, if you want to take a little bit more time to play with your mediums, get a little bit more accustomed to them, see what you can do layering, um, go ahead and pause your video and when you've had a chance to play, you know, come on back we'll we'll get started then on our our individual exercises
So now we're going to move into our first exercise. Um, what we're going to do briefly is close our eyes, focus on what we are feeling in this moment, and then we are going to intuitively create something from that emotion. Um, there's no reason for us to put a specific name to the emotion or a specific word. It's all going to be fluid and color and patterns. There is no right or wrong way to do this. Um, this is one that I created and everybody's is going to be different. Um, we'll play with the colors, but I'm going to lead you through a little bit of a breathing exercise. And during that, you know, we'll have our eyes closed. So don't worry about what's happening on the camera. I'm just talking. Um, so if you want to get safe, comfortable, lock the door, shut off your phone if you need to, um, and then get comfortable and we're going to close our eyes. Okay. First thing I want you to do is just take a big deep breath in all the way into your belly. Just feel it fill you up, hold it for a second and then release. If you want to make a noise, sigh, let it out in a rush, whatever feels right. And we're going to take another big deep breath in, hold, and release. One more time. In, hold, release. And I want you to keep your eyes closed for just a minute. And we're going to focus on how you feel in this moment right here, right now. Um, are you feeling light and airy? Are you feeling flowy? Is, are you um, maybe you're calm or excited, whatever it is, however it's appearing to you. What colors do you see? Are you seeing any textures, patterns? Um, just, is there any imagery coming through? It can be abstract, it can be an actual physical object. Whatever it is, it's personal to you. And when you're ready, I want you to open your eyes and the first object, or first medium, color, whatever it is that you see, I want you to go for that one. Okay. With these exercises, I tend to work small just because I found that larger pieces of paper when you're not completely sure what you're doing can be a little bit overwhelming or intimidating. So if you work on a small like five by seven piece, um, that's about as big as I would go for something like this. Um, especially when you're starting out. You can always tape your paper down if you want it to be stable or you wet the back and stick it to your surface and that'll hold it in place and keep it wet for longer. I like mine to be free flowing, free moving so that I can turn it as I need to to add more colors. So whatever it was that you saw when you start, when you um, were meditating, that's what we're going to do now. So your emotions right now. Um, and you just just go at it as as you feel the colors, whatever they may have been. There is no right or wrong way to do this. It is completely and totally about you. What you feel, what you see, what you want to do. And these are supposed to be fast are meant to be kind of quick exercises. You don't want to overthink what you're doing because then you start, I find I start to doubt myself if I spend too much time thinking about it. Um, and you, you start picking at the details and there's nothing that you can do at this point that is wrong in your painting. So you just, it's gonna be quick. And you, like I said, you can work wet on wet, dry, you can start with um, your watercolors or your pencils, however it is that you want or feel um, is right for you.
You can see how I get sharp lines on top of my watercolors by using my pencils here. And they're just, it's great for just being able to create shapes and textures without having to be too picky about how you actually apply your colors. And the part, the thing about this is that it can take you five minutes, it can take you 15, 20, probably the limit I would go is about half an hour. Um, you don't want, like I said, you don't want to spend too much time thinking about it, worrying about if it's turning, turning out the way that you want it to. So we're just working quick and doing whatever feels right for you in this moment. That is what is most important here. You don't have to work top to bottom or left to right. You can see I'm kind of bouncing back and forth between the different areas as um, my inspiration strikes, I guess. It's just however you feel intuitively at this moment. And also don't worry about how messy you make your, your space. I, it's, I always start out completely organized with everything in my containers and put away where they're supposed to be. And by the time I get partway through one painting, I have stuff spread out all around me. And I think I'm actually done with mine. If you need more time, you're welcome to pause the video and work on it some more. Uh, if you need to or want to, you can definitely journal if anything specific came up during this um, exercise. And then I will see you back here and when you're ready. So now that we've had a little bit of an experience of what it is that we're doing, we're going to focus on a specific emotion. We're going to do the meditation again, and I will suggest an emotion to you, um, and then we'll and then we'll paint. So I want you to close your eyes again. And we're going to take a big deep breath in, hold it for a minute, let it out. Big breath in, hold, and let it out. And one more time, in, hold, and out. And with your eyes still closed, I want you to think of a time that you were angry. I want you to think of the colors and the shapes and the textures, just like what we did before. Perhaps your anger was based out of fear or frustration or stress. Whatever it was, I want you to see how it is that you view anger. I don't want you to physically stop and stay here in this angry space, but that's part of the benefit of painting. We're gonna move right into the painting. So as soon as you're ready, I want you to open your eyes and we're gonna work on our anger painting. Um, for me, I always, my angry paintings always come out fairly similar, but everybody's is gonna be different because everybody feels and sees anger in a different way. So how how the the emotion um, you know affects your your mood, your body, um, you know maybe you feel tense or is it a deep-seated cold kind of anger or is it a bright hot and fierce anger for me my anger always tends up ends up being kind of tense and so i end up with a lot of sharp lines um, the brightest colors of red and just sometimes i've actually almost um 
drawn so hard with my colored pencils that I almost ripped the paper um, and you end up seeing the the color of it on the back of the paper or coming through because I, I I get a little bit intense with my anger drawing sometimes. But you know this is a safe way to um, let out your anger instead of resorting to whatever um, other release techniques that people may have developed. This way is safe, it's personal, and there's absolutely no reason why at any time you need to show anybody these paintings. It's all about you. Um, I did actually take mine with me to my oncology appointments and shared them with my my oncologist and that was a good opening for us to discuss how I was dealing with the, the cancer diagnosis. Um, so that is always an option for you. Any more? I'm gonna get a little bit messy here. And again, if you need more time, pause the video and when you're ready, we can come back and we'll start on the next one. So anger paintings are always a little bit intense. So what I want you to do right now is I want you to stand up with me and we're going to do a, a little bit of an exercise here. Um, in the wild animals, they get stressed, they get afraid, and the first thing they do to get over that is they shake it out. So what we wanna do is just shake. You're gonna shake your hands, shake your hips, shake your legs out. I want you to just release anything that is left over from that painting so that it doesn't end up in this next one. You can do you know, a little dance if you need to, just let it all out. You're at home. This isn't gonna be on video, just me. So you're safe. Do whatever it is that you need to do right now. And when you're ready, I'm gonna, we're gonna go through the next one. So we're gonna meditate again. So get comfy again, get back to your painting mind, and we're gonna close our eyes and do the next meditation. So we're gonna take a big deep breath in, hold it and release. In, hold, and release. One more time. In, hold, and release. And this time, I want you to think of a time that you were sad. Some event, something happened, some time that you just weren't feeling quite yourself. And I want you to find those emotions, see the colors, the textures. As soon as you're ready, of course, begin to paint. If there is um, an event that connected to the sadness, I want you to find that and we are going to put that onto our painting. So whenever you're ready, we're gonna go ahead and do our um, sadness painting. I have a little bit of red left over there from my anger painting, but not much, so it's okay. Um, You can always rinse out your water as you need, of course. But you just wanna tune into how the different emotions affect the, the way that you actually feel the movement of the paint, you know, maybe your sadness slows you down a little bit, let, makes you a little bit more um, able to contemplate the actual application, gives you maybe a little bit more time to actually watch the paint move. 
which for me is always just almost just as relaxing as doing the actual painting. And I just got very, very dark black right there. So it doesn't feel quite what I intended, but of course you can always readjust and force your colors to move around a bit to, you know, play with the paper itself. And if you do, you know, feel like you did something that you don't quite like, you can always take paper towel or Kleenex and dab some of it off. There's absolutely no reason why you can't take color back off again. I always find this just so soothing, just letting it all go. And again, as soon as you feel like you've completed your painting, then that's fine. You can stop. And, you know, if you need to journal about anything, go ahead and journal. If you feel the need to shake it out again, take a break. You're more than welcome to pause the video at any time and step away. Sometimes that's, that's needed when doing anything, this kind of emotional painting. So when you're ready, we will move on to the next painting. Okay, so now for this last one, you're probably gonna wanna change out your water after those first three paintings. Um, the dark murky paint water is probably not gonna be the best base for this next painting. Um, we're gonna do the same meditation again, and this one should be a little bit more fun, hopefully. Um, so I want you to close your eyes and once more, we're gonna take a big deep breath in. Hold for a sec and let it out. Big deep breath in. Hold and release. Once more, in. Hold and release. And this time I want you to think about joy, happiness, perhaps excited, something that made you want to do cartwheels and somersaults. What colors are you associating with it? Maybe it was a specific event or a place, person, but how does that translate into colors and shapes and textures? Um, there's, all, there's, again, so many different ways that you can express this. So whenever you're ready, open your eyes and begin to paint. And remember, it is all about how you feel this emotion. So like always, I, I have the tendency to always go with a wet on wet technique, but you can do whatever 
technique is most appealing to you, the combinations of mediums. Um, I'm actually going to do a little bit of a combination here. So I've got my wet half and I just added some colors onto my, I got fuzzies in mine. Um, You know, there's all sorts of things about color theory and the psychology of color. There's no right or wrong, like I've said. Um, but, you know, a lot of people associate certain colors with certain emotions and other people associate other colors. So it doesn't matter which way, which colors, shapes, textures, whatever it is that you're feeling. And of course, paint until you feel like it is done. It is all about you and you don't want to overwork it. So if it's a fast painting, then it's a fast painting. There's no reason for you to work on it just because the rest of us continue to work or because I continue to talk. Actually, this is my favorite brush for doing splatter painting. It's got a little bit more of a soft bristle, so it bounces a little bit more when I splatter paint. So you'll find different brushes are great for different um, patterns or applications. All right, welcome back. So we've done our four emotion paintings and you can see just by what I have here, how completely different they appear. Everybody else's is gonna be completely different from mine. There's so many different ways that you can feel and express emotions. And I just think it's great to be able to get them out onto paper like this. I always feel such a sense of calm after I've completed one of my paintings, especially if um, I was feeling particularly angry or stressed about something, there's always this sort of intense, deep inner calm that comes from it. Um, one of the other things that I do, and you can definitely paint along with me if you want, but um, I do, I guess, intuitive paintings to find out what it is that I need most in a certain specific event or moment. And what I do is I basically start out with one of my emotion paintings and create a background like this one. And then I'll go back in and add details to it. So this one actually to me um, kind of reminds me of like a flower garden. And as I'll, you know, I can paint in the flowers and add the details to it now with the dry background with wet paint to create um, imagery and stuff. Uh, so I would, you know, put details in into the flowers and when I paint like this I tend to hear um, if I ask a specific question what it is that I need right now I'll hear answers or responses to that um, as I'm painting and it gives me ideas as to where um, you know what is most pressing at that moment what it is that I need to focus on but that's something that you can experiment with on your own. If there's something that you need answers to, try a version of the emotional paintings to, I guess, create sort of an oracle for yourself. Um, it's also just kind of a great way to free up your painting 
a little bit. It gives you a chance to experiment and explore what it is that you can do with paints. Um, but one of the other things that you can do is if you set up yourself a little travel kit, you can take it with you. I keep all this little box has everything that I need in it for painting and creating and then just keep a box with you of small pieces of paper. You could get a watercolor sketchbook is great. They make them small enough that you can stick them in your pocket. But if you go to something that you know is gonna be stressful or something, sneak away, take it with you when you go to the bathroom at some point and sit down and just do a five or 10 minute painting before you go back into whatever situation it is that's causing you stress it happens. You can release it and perhaps come back to the situation with a little bit clearer mind in that way. Um, but if you don't have watercolors, use whatever you have on hand. You can use do this with acrylics, you can do it with oil paints, you can even do it in black and white if all you have is a regular ballpoint pen and a sheet of printer paper and you need a moment's release, go for it. If you don't have any art supplies, you have kids, markers and crayons are fantastic for doing this. Um, kids actually tend to do this by themselves without any prompting and we just kind of forget how to do it as we get older, but watch them paint or draw and follow their lead. It's just, it's so great to be able to do all of this and release those emotions in a safe, controlled environment like this. Um, have fun, most important thing. If you want to share any of your paintings, you are welcome to share them to my Facebook page, uh, Caitlin Kester Designs. You can share them with me on Instagram at Caitlin Kester. And of course, you can share it with Lola on their social media as well. Um, I want to thank you all for joining me and have fun.